period? Sudden gushes happen. Say goodbye gush fears thanks to Always Ultra Thins with rapid dry technology that absorbs two times faster. Hello, clean and comfortable. Always fear no gush. Okay, everyone, our mission is complete balanced nutrition. Together, we provide nutrients to support immune, muscle, bone, and heart health. Yay! Ensure with 25 vitamins and minerals. Enter the $10,000 Nourishing Moments giveaway. Tomorrow on E.T., we're exclusive behind the scenes of Haunted Mansion. This place is legendary. It's powerful to see it. I want them to be like, whoa, wait a minute, hold up. Make sure you check that out. Yeah, but we got one last thing to show you before we go. Night, everyone. You're worth nothing. <laughs> Brian Cranston could win his seventh Emmy based on his work. Happening now. All this summer heat could be seeping into your home. Coming up, we have some tips to keep your home cool and your energy bill low. The brutal heat and humidity continue, but there is some relief out there for a few. Coming up, I'll show you some showers and storms on the radar and give you a preview of this upcoming weekend. When you're pregnant, getting proper nutrition is very important. That's why a lot of expectant mothers turn to prenatal supplements. But which ones are the best for you and your baby? The News at 5 starts right now. It's the summer solstice today, but the record-breaking temperatures this week have made it nothing to celebrate. Yeah, meteorologist Sarah Spivey watching not just the thermometer today, but also the chance for severe storms, and we have some right now actually in our viewing area. Sarah. That's right, Steve and Ursula. Up in the hill country, there are a few severe storms, but it's all about the heat locally around San Antonio. Heat index values range anywhere from 110 to 118 in Helotus, 121 heat index value right now in New Braunfels, so brutally hot. Some people in the hill country are getting relief in the form of rain. However, some of these storms are strong or severe. Take a look out in in parts of Kerr County and in parts of Bandera County. This is where we've got two severe thunderstorm warnings. Areas in this yellow uh, in Bandera and Kerr County in a severe thunderstorm warning until 545. The issue here, some quarter sized hail. Otherwise, though, temperatures are falling in parts of the hill country because of the rain cooled air. There is a small chance that these severe storms could make it to the San Antonio metro area. I'll be back tracking these storms for you and talking about our very extended hot forecast. Steve. Thank you, Sarah. Even with your air conditioner working as hard as it can, you can still be sweating this out. It might be time to make some small changes that could make a huge difference keeping your home cool and that energy bill low. Our Camilio Juarez tells us why some tape, some sealer, and some good planning could help you weather this sweltering weather. With this heat, you know, we're all getting those CPS warnings that to turn your AC down. John Dunlap owns Five Oaks Hardware off Thousand Oaks. Protect their home from the heat. If you go over to your window, you can feel the heat coming in. Or if you go outside, you can probably feel the cold coming out. And then, you know, it just makes your electricity bills higher because your AC is having to work harder. Any of those holes or windows can be sealed, taped, filled up to keep the cold air in. Just make sure you can get out. Another way to keep your home cool is to buy a large fan. That's really great. Another thing is to replace your air filter. Write the date on the side so you know when to replace it. Depending, you know, the more expensive the filter is, maybe it'll last for two or three months, but some of them are just every month. Bugs are also trying to find relief from the heat, and they're sneaking into cool air any way they can. So you might need bug traps. Camelia Juarez, KSAT 12 News. San Antonio police releasing the photos of the two women arrested in connection with the disappearance of a seven-year-old girl earlier this week. 21-year-old Naya O'Donnell and 34-year-old Nikki Garcia both charged with kidnapping. The little girl's disappearance prompted an Amber Alert, but it was discontinued yesterday after the child was found at a local hospital at Madison Oak Drive. Investigators say that O'Donnell and Garcia had some sort of an acquaintance with the little girl. Police are still investigating what happened here. A family dispute escalating from words to gunshots. This happened last night around 930 in the 100 block of Lee Street near Pleasanton Road on the south side. San Antonio police, there was some type of fight between an uncle and his nephew, and then the shooting happened. The uncle was shot in the foot. He was taken to the hospital. He's expected to recover. The teen was later found hiding in some high grass at an abandoned house next door. Is San Antonio firefighters looking into what caused a garage to catch fire early this morning? Fire crews called out just before 1230 in the morning to this home on Maverick Draw. 
That's near Old Tesla Road and Gilbo Road. That's on the far northwest side. When they arrived, they could see smoke coming from the garage. Fire crews were able to contain that fire to the garage itself. They tell us no injuries were reported. New at five today, another San Antonio staple come and gone the way that many other local favorites have today. Twin Sisters Bakery and Cafe officially closed its doors. Very popular eatery, a mainstay on North New Braunfels Avenue in New Alamo Heights for 43 years. Staffers took to Facebook to let patrons know that the cafe would be closing effective today. Loyal customers made it a point to stop by one last time to remember and reflect. It's a place where all the families came, all the kids, all the grandchildren, and uh, it's an icon, and it's too bad that they're closing. We're so sad to see them go. That's where everyone met. Uh, and we spoke to Mrs. Dietrich. She got a parting sentimental gift. She was given a fiesta wreath that had hung in the cafe for many years. It was during fiesta that she and her husband, former Spurs player and broadcaster Kobe Dietrich, began dating. Little bit of trivia there. Mm -hmm. The sounds of underwater banging, giving a bit of hope that that Titanic tour cruise that went off course in the Atlantic Ocean is still okay. The U.S. Coast Guard estimates the five people on board in that submersible vessel will run out of oxygen tomorrow morning. Yeah, time running out. The sound, the only clue thus far of activity aboard the excursion vessel has been heard for two days now, but to, no one has actually pinpointed exactly where it's coming from. ABC's Rena Roy with the increased effort to find it and why this vessel was already facing scrutiny before this tour. Officials estimate there's less than 24 hours of oxygen left in a missing submersible with five people on board. The search is intensifying rescue crews desperate to find the vessel. Overnight, the U.S. Coast Guard confirming a Canadian aircraft detected underwater noises in the search area, but still no sign of the vessel. It's very difficult to discern what the source of those no noises are at times, but I can tell you that this team has multiple sensors. They're in the area and every one of those those noises is being analyzed, tracked, looked for patterns, and reported upon. The U.S., Canada, and France joining forces to scour more than 10,000 miles of ocean. The Titan vessel, operated by Ocean Gate Expeditions, disappeared an hour and 45 minutes into its journey Sunday morning to see the Titanic shipwreck. All five people inside the sub now identified. British explorer and billionaire Hamish Harding, Pakistani businessman Shazada Dawood, and his 19-year-old son Suleiman, world-renowned Titanic researcher and diver P.H. Narjule, and the CEO of Ocean Gate, Stockton Rush, who gave ABC affiliate Como a look inside the Titan as it was being built in 2018. A team of five will squeeze into Titan for each dive and view the wreckage on these monitors. To fly the vessel, the pilot uses a PlayStation controller. Now growing questions around safety features. In a 2018 counterclaim lawsuit, a former employee claims he was fired after warning about the sub's lack of physical safety scans, the company sued him for breach of contract and allegedly sharing company secrets. The disputes settled out of court. In a 2018 letter obtained by the New York Times and authenticated by ABC News, members of a committee specializing in submersibles expressed unanimous concern about the sub's safety. Members say OceanGate did make some changes after that letter. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Go to far west Texas now where police in El Paso say a 48 year old woman is charged with aggravated assault after allegedly shooting her Uber driver because she reportedly thought she was being kidnapped and driven to Mexico. Police say the woman is from Kentucky. According to their investigation so far, detectives say the woman was picked up by the Uber driver. He was taking her to her, to her selected destination when she reportedly saw road signs for Juarez, Mexico. Police say she shot the 52-year-old Uber driver multiple times, including in the head. The woman then called police. She's being detained by authorities as they continue to investigate. Detectives say the driver is in the hospital tonight, fighting for his life. Across America, the Supreme Court expected to hold a closed-door meeting tomorrow to consider whether they should add a high-profile Second Amendment case next term. The case focuses on a federal law that bans people with domestic violence restraining orders from having guns. Last year, the high court had a ruling that expanded gun rights, prompting lower courts to reconsider thousands of gun restrictions. 
In this current case, the conservative leading fifth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals decided the domestic violence related gun law is unconstitutional. Critics say the move will make it easier for alleged abusers to obtain firearms. Your Amazon Prime membership, the subject of a Federal Trade Commission lawsuit, which accuses the company of tricking its customers into signing up. Today, the FTC filed this lawsuit in federal court alleging Amazon deceived millions of consumers into signing up for its Prime subscription service, then trapped them into recurring subscriptions without their consent. What's more, the suit claims that a deceptive tactic of confusing customers called dark patterns was used by the company to make it hard hard for users who were actually trying to cancel their memberships. In a statement, Amazon said the suit was filed before it had a chance to fully respond to the investigation and called the claims, quote, false on the facts and the law, unquote. In more consumer news here in the tech here in Texas, actually, we're used to seeing our chicken being raised in fields for the most part. Times are changing. The U.S. Department of Agriculture clearing the way for meats grown in the lab. The agency has cleared lab-grown or cultivated meat to be produced and sold in the United States. That's according to Upside Foods and Good Meat, those two companies that produce it. The Associated Press reporting U.S. regulators have approved the sale of chicken made from cultivated cells. Good Meat advertises its product as meat without slaughter, a more humane approach to eating meat. Instead, cell-based proteins are grown in a giant vat, much like what you'd find at a beer brewery. Supporters hope it will help fight climate change by reducing the need for traditional animal agriculture, which admits greenhouse gases. Good Meat said it will start production right away. Who wants to be out in this heat right now? Well, these poor folks, you know, do not. This is I-35 at Loop 410, where the traffic is backing up as people are trying to get out of downtown. Uh, you can see just slowly crawling along, no real reason for the backup except it being rush hour. The sounds of air conditioners and fans, not the only music to ears this summer. Children of all ages are learning to sing and play instruments this summer at the Classical Music Institute's summer camp. The students range in age from 8 to 18 years old. The music lessons are intended to help them improve their confidence, all while learning new skills. Music is great for building community and just making friends and also building your confidence and being able to get up there on stage and perform something that you've been working so hard at. This year, almost 80 students participated in this program, and they're going to show off what they've learned on stage this Friday when they give a final performance. It's still ahead on the News at 5, avoiding pregnancy problems. Prenatal supplements are there to make sure mothers are getting the right nutrition when they're expecting. We're going to help you make the right choice for you and your baby. Next. I'm Myra Arthur here in the newsroom with a look at what we're working on for the news at six o'clock today. And we start in court where a man is on trial for murder using a shovel. The defendant's attorneys argue this was a case of self-defense, but an eyewitness told the jury a different story of what happened to the victim. Plus, how Port San Antonio is trying to help veterans transition out of life in the military and into jobs in the private sector. I'll tell you how you can take advantage of that. And the new San Antonio City Council now set for the next two years. The inauguration ceremony is about to begin in council chambers. We will take you there live today on the News at 6. We'll see you then. Thank you, Myra. There are a million things to think about when you're pregnant, and one of the most important ones is getting the right nutrition. Yeah, that often means taking prenatal supplements. They're not one size fits all, though. So 12 in your sides, Marilyn Moritz has information to help you make the best choice for you and your baby. I started taking my prenatal vitamin when I was trying to get pregnant. Taylor Frost Smith is following doctor's orders, taking a prenatal vitamin. Hers is high in folic acid. I just don't get enough folic acid in my diet. I don't eat enough fish or spinach. So I'm really hoping that my prenatal vitamin will make up for that. It can be tough to get all of the micronutrients a pregnant person needs from diet alone. So supplements are critical, but they're not all the same. Almost all prenatal supplements have enough folic acid, but when it comes to other micronutrients, many of the available options at your local drugstore have lackluster formulations. Many prenatal supplements don't meet the recommended micronutrient levels endorsed by the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists. Take calcium. 
Consumer Reports looked at 15 popular brands. Ten have calcium, but not enough. Five don't have it at all. Remember, supplements don't face the same scrutiny as prescription drugs. And you don't always get what you pay for. Consumer Reports found some pricier prenatals lack nutrients the cheaper pills have. They found nature-made prenatal multivitamin folic acid plus DHA soft gels has most of the recommended amounts of nutrients, and it's less than a dollar a dose, where some prenatals cost twice as much. Bottom line, prioritize the micronutrients your doctor recommends. Yeah, we still need to get the nursery done. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Taking a look outside with live cam, 103. We've got it easy compared to some folks. That's what I was going to say. When you look at the map, 103 doesn't seem so bad right now. It's incredibly hot, especially west of San Antonio. We'll get to Del Rio and it's record breaking high today. But first, I want to bring to your attention that there are some storms in the hill country. Folks in the hill country getting some relief from the heat, but at the cost of some severe weather. There is in particular this storm, which is right on the Bandera and Kerr County line that is capable of ping pong ball sized hail. Uh, that severe thunderstorm morning in effect until 545 tonight. You can see where that hail core uh, would be right there on along 39. This storm is moving to the east at about 15 miles per hour, so it's very slow. It does look like the core of this storm will miss the city centers of Medina and near Los Maples. However, anybody along 39 there in Kerr County should really uh, make sure to use caution. Uh, if this can hold together, it could would be south of the Ingram area by about 620, but that is a big if because again, these storms are fairly slow moving and they're pulsing up and down. There's another severe thunderstorm warning though in Gillespie County for areas between Harper and Fredericksburg. This severe thunderstorm warning goes into effect until 6 p.m. The biggest threats here would be again quarter sized hail gusty winds as well. Now this entire system, if I play this, you can see that it's fairly stationary, not really moving all that much. We'll have to wait and see if San Antonio can get on the rain cool there. And of course, I'll keep you updated if one of those stronger or severe storms moves into the metro area. For now, though, this is what we're dealing with. 103 degrees outside feels like 111 because of that high dew point. And tonight, here's the forecast for you. Again, a few storms are possible, 20 to 30 percent chance, but temperatures are going to be falling into the upper 80s by midnight. It's going to be a warm evening. Once again, here's a look at temperatures. You can see that it is hotter west of San Antonio, 113 in Del Rio and Eagle Pass, bringing up Del Rio. Del Rio today saw a high temperature of 115 degrees. That, my friends, is the hottest temperature ever on record for Del Rio. Records go back to 1906. By the way, yesterday was the, the recent holder of the record of 113. So in the span of two days, we've seen two record breaking high temperatures in Del Rio. Very hot, not only in Del Rio, but again, also locally here. We are getting some cloud cover, though, from those storms up in the hill country. Temperatures that still, though, swelteringly hot. You factor in the heat index value. It feels like 111 in San Antonio, feels like 113 in Port S.A. And again, you can see where we've seen a little bit of relief. Uh, from those storms. Now, as we look at the big picture, notice again that there are some of those storms across the hill country that are starting to blossom. That is because this really brutal heat high has moved off to the west just enough to allow for some of those storms to move south and develop across the hill country. We'll have to watch the radar carefully. Odds are not good for San Antonio to see rain, but it is still possible in the overnight hours for a few showers and storms to develop across the hill country. And we'll have to wait and see if those can make it to San Antonio in the overnight hours, although the better chance is east of 35. Then it's going to be a hot day tomorrow. And once again, tomorrow night, some storms will develop up in the hill country. We'll have to see if they can make it to San Antonio. Here's your case 12 hour forecast for the day tomorrow. 77 early in the morning, a small chance for a storm early in the morning. But the biggest thing tomorrow is going to be the heat. It's going to feel once again like it's close to 110 degrees, even though the thermometer may only reach 100. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at that seven day forecast. You can see that the biggest theme here is that the 100 degree temperature streak is going to continue. If there's a small glimmer of hope, Ursula and Steve, it's that the humidity is going to come down somewhat next week.
but it's still going to be hot. We are going to keep an eye on it. Thank you so much, Sarah. We'll be right back with sports. All right, guys, welcome back. The NBA draft going down tomorrow night at the Barclays Center. It's a very exciting time for the San Antonio Spurs, who have the number one overall pick. And with that selection right there, you saw him behind me. The Spurs are expected to take 19-year-old Victor Wenbanyama. So we've been talking a lot about him for weeks now. After the Silver and Black won the NBA draft lottery last month, earlier today, the top prospects attending the 2023 NBA draft held media availability at the Westin New York at the Times Square due to demand Wemby got Got his own room for his Q&A session with the media. He was asked if he thinks the hype surrounding him has gone too far. I don't let this, all, this, uh, all, all this stuff get into my head because I, you know, I got such high expectations for myself that I, I'm immune to all this stuff. So, no, I, don't, I really don't care. Robin Roberts with Good Morning America went to Paris to sit down and talk with the 19-year-old phenom. Victor is set to make history as the first player from France to be the number one pick in the NBA draft. So how does he feel or does he feel any pressure at all? Most important for this is to have your goal in sight. I have such high expectations for myself and I'm so determined that the expectations of others are nothing compared to what I expect of myself. There have also been some who look at you and go, are you ready the day in, day out, the grueling NBA schedule? They could think that because they don't, they don't know my work ethic. I know how I work, how we work with my, with my surroundings, with my environment, you know, I, I could never have any doubt. Spurs general manager Brian Wright is doing a heck of a job here. A wonderful job. In fact, the Spurs own 23 picks in the next five drafts. That's right, including three this year, and they have some $40 million in cap space. We want to be able to build the team in multiple ways. You know that the core um, part of your build is going to come through the draft and build internally through development, but you wanted the ability to have extra picks and the cap space and flexibility so you can capitalize at any time. And so we'll be disciplined, we'll be patient, um, but we want to be able to, uh, to capitalize when, when things present themselves. So we're excited about what those things present for us. Okay, we're really excited about this. The 2023 NBA Draft is tomorrow night. We'll have extended coverage tomorrow at 5, 6, and 6.30. And, of course, the night beat. And you can watch the draft and witness Spurs history tomorrow night at 7 right here on KSAT 12. And, RJ, we're going to give you our MVP today because Thank you were just you. hanging out in the newsroom. We were having technical <laughs> problems technical problems in Brooklyn, and you rushed right in. So I appreciate it. We, yeah. Yeah. we will have Larry live from Brooklyn yeah. coming up coming at off six. the bench, guys. Yeah, I know. You're our own Manu. <laughs> yeah, look Sixth at man of the year. Patty Mills. Yeah. What was it? Grandpa Juice? What was that? <laughs> we'll be right back. Not quite. Again, I'm watching these storms in the hill country capable of quarter sized hail to see if they can make it to the San Antonio metro area. Otherwise, a similar setup tomorrow with evening storms possible, but not likely. And then it's just brutally hot in the coming days. Heat index values ranging anywhere from 107 to 113. Thank you, Sarah, and thank you for watching the News at 5 with us. We'll see you back here at 6. World News is next.